Peace. This is Brother Hatim, and you have joined us on Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to check out our site and subscribe at tribe.giamijourney.com. All my brothers and sisters, hold hands and bow your heads. Let us pray. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth amongst the God. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? I say, defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of court. I have said, you are God. And all of you are chosen of the most high. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all nations. Allah who art born. This is Kadara Franks, and you are now listening to the Giami Journey Radio. Keep up with the journey. Check out what we have done in the past. Go to journeyarchives.com. This is Adam Sheik, a.k.a. Ace, live from Shisha Lounge. And you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to follow Giami Journey on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Check us out. Join the journey. This is Adam Sheik, a.k.a. Ace, live from Shisha Lounge, and you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. You are now listening to Giami Journey Radio with Monica. Enjoy. This is Marina and this is Yame Journey Radio. This is Willie. Welcome to Yame Journey Radio. I want to give a shout out to Silver Kevin. All my Silver Nation out there. I want to give a shout out to my mom. I guess yeah, shout out my dad for raising me and my family for being around me. And I want to give a shout out to the people of my generation that's trying to do something big. It's Mansoor Hotep, a.k.a. Mr. Deity. Mr. Deity, does it sound good? I think it sounds great. Right now, you listening to Giami Journey Radio. If you're not adding anything to the culture that you claim, you don't deserve to carry his name. This is Brother Hotem coming at you live, and you are now listening to the Giami Journey Radio. Shouts out to the Giami tribe, Giami family. Stand up. Peace. Thank you. 
If you're not adding anything to the culture that you claim, you don't deserve to carry this name. This is Brother Hatim coming at you live, and you are now listening to the Giami Journey Radio. Shouts out to Giami Tribe, Giami Giami Family. Stand up. You are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. Peace. Peace. This is Gina. This is Gina. And you are now. Now you listen to my daddy. On Giami. Giami Journey. Radio. Radio. Peace. Center. I pledge to find and connect with my center. I pledge to build my spirit, mind, and body. I pledge to use my hands to build a better world for myself, my loved ones, and my community. I pledge to use my mind to think deeper, further, and higher to create a better reality for myself. I pledge to live my life and go beyond all my self-imposed limitations. I pledge to promote the principles of the Giami warrior and to assist all those seeking a path of success. I pledge all these things first to myself my teachers, to all my relations, and to my higher power. I am Giami. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. That is the Giami players that are said by all of our true members at least once a day. Peace and welcome to our YouTube channel. Check out our videos and podcasts. Subscribe as well as join the journey. Push past your self-imposed limitations with N. The Giami Journey. Peace. fam brother hot tim i am live man listen i am so glad to be here i made it i survived another week and i have been keeping up with my principles as you know today for those that are on the journey is nia and nia stands for purpose and we're looking for the purpose beyond um the purpose for why we here, the purpose of uh, of our existence. We're looking for the purpose in the day. We're looking for the purpose in the people around us. We're looking for purpose in the things that happen today. And we are going to cover, because you know, man, you know, man, listen. You know that the inauguration went down. And some of y'all are partying and kicking it. Hey, hey, pull up a seat. We're going to talk about this inauguration, this inaugural address, right? You know, Great Pumpkin got it in today. And I was just thinking today as I was bottling up this ambrosia, who Donald Trump reminds me of? President Donald Trump reminds me of. And I'm going to let you know in a minute. I'm going to let you know in a minute. Some of y'all might be old enough to remember, but after 30 years of indoctrination, um, because a lot of us, we, in my generation, we grew up, a lot of us grew up around the TV. And as the generations came, more TV and more media became available to us. Um, and it got free, freer as we moved on. Because I, I remember, some, I know some of y'all know that cable used to only have like 12 channels or 10 channels or something like that. Now we got over 700 channels and there's a lot of indoctrination going on and after years and years of indoctrination right we have the result 
we had one of the results we elected a president that reminds us of some of the characters and some of the heroes for some of us out there right because i'm telling you right now man i'm telling you i'm telling you without a shadow of a doubt that my man donald trump president donald trump because people get mad when people don't call obama president obama president obama president donald trump reminds me of rick flair and i was it took me a while to get it but i came home and i start working with my my brews right uh, i got i'm trying to get these ambrosia orders i got some orders coming out and it took me a second but he reminds me of rick flair in a lot of ways he's the dirtiest player in the game that's that was rick flair rick flair's claim to fame um he's um bombastic like rick flair he's a rolex wearing red tie wearing uh rolex watch having uh to, and, and it's hard for him to hold those gator shoes down I'm telling you, when you listen to Ric Flair And you go back Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about Just type in Best of Ric Flair And listen to Ric Flair's rhetoric And you will see Where Donald Trump Got a lot of his character That's who he reminds me of it's like this is why it's hard for me to even be upset with this dude because this dude remind me of somebody that I used to sit down as a teen, not even a teenager, at about 10 years old and watch him get on TV and say outrageous shit every week. Every week, Ric Flair would come on talking about how he was going to whoop somebody's ass, talking about how he was going to disrespect somebody, talking about other people's relationship and how good he had it how much money he had and how he grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth and he is the shit he is absolutely and let me do it the way our boy do it the best right congratulations america you have you have voted in rick flair as president so i can only imagine what he's gonna tell china and i can only imagine what when when him and uh, um, uh, uh, Putin, who was um, uh, uh, the the Russian enemy that used to be very prevalent in wrestling, right? I can't wait for him to fall out because both of them are exactly the same, and it's gonna be like watching wrestling. People want to be entertained. That's it. You know what I'm saying? This whole damn thing could blow up and burn up, as but just keep them entertained, and that's what Donald Trump is going to provide. He's going to provide entertainment, right? This, I mean, I want we're going to go through this inauguration speech, right? Um, and we're going to talk about this, right? We're going we we have to, right? Not whether it's good or bad or whatever. We just want to. I just want to make sure. That we are clear on some of the stuff that he's saying. Then we could connect it back to Ric Flair. We could connect it back to us and our purpose. But of course, before we do that, I am going to be sipping from the thing. So, Miss Miss J, you already know how I get. So, you know, if you, I see I see you hung up, right? Because you know how I get. Um, it's about to go down tonight, right? So, before we do that, I need to do my health drink thing, right? This is that Ambrosia. They are the sponsors for the day show. They are the sponsors for my video. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is a drink of the gods. A sip of immortality is what we say, right? We produce this in Giami Journey. The goal is to eventually, once I get um, permission from some parents, I'm going to show some of the young people how to do it. How to take what we call the scoby, but we call it the phoenix feather. And change water into gold. This is gold. Look at the color. Look, it ain't gonna pop because I just I just put this one on. I just put this out. I'm just oh, mm, damn. It rained on me. I like it. I just bottled this one. 
just so that we can have the effect. I want to send shots out to my speaker, my speaker fam. You know what I'm saying? I don't want y'all to think I'm neglecting y'all. I'm just expanding the the media empire. All right, so here we go. Here's to America's new president. Thank you for electing an entertainer. Thank you because you are going to make me rich. Yes, you are. Mm-hmm. Your decision to elect this man is going to keep my news line full. And you are going to help me build up, build up a media empire. <sighs> no. All right, I just dropped the signal. Um, let me go on and restart it. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to go down. I'm sorry. Give me a second. We're going to do this one. So give me a, give me a second. Sir. We said that we must come to know the difference between mobilization and organization because the enemy will use mobilization to demobilize us. Mobilization is very easy, very, very easy. Because since we're people who are instinctively ready to respond against acts of injustice, anytime there's one little act of injustice, we can blow it up and we'll find people who come and make some mass demonstration around it. Miss Sally lost a job. Let's rally. She will get a job back. People will come and rally. So and so got kicked out of school because the teachers unjust. The unjust. The people will come and rally. They will come to rally at issues. And this is what mobilization does. It mobilizes people around issues. Those of us who are revolutionary are not concerned with issues. We're concerned with the system. The difference must be properly understood. The difference must be properly understood. Mobilization usually leads to reform action, not to revolutionary action. If we would look scientifically at the October 16 million and more march, we would see clearly that this was a mobilized event, not an organized event. We must know clearly the difference between mobilization and organization. One of the characteristics of mobilization is that it is temporary. Organization is permanent and eternal. Clear differences must be made because the unconscious can usually be captured easily around one issue items, around mobilization items, but it's hard to catch them around organization. But these unconscious must be brought to organization. We must transform mobilization to organization. We say the enemy will come and use mobilization to demobilize us. Many brothers and sisters who've been to the Million and More March will say to you, I was there. But what are you doing today, my sister? I was there. There weren't too many sisters out there, but you know, with a million brothers together, you know where I had to be. I was there. <laughs> and then, of course, you find brothers. Yeah, I was there. I was there. I helped you. What are you doing today, brother? If we're not careful, we allow mobilization to become events. The struggle is never an event, it's a process, a continual, eternal process. We say that it's our job to use mobilization to drive us to organization. You know our theme is organization. We want power. We don't want money. We don't want fame. We don't want fortune. We don't want popularity. We want power. Power. And power comes only from the organized masses. Power comes only from the organized masses. Therefore, since this is what we're concerned with, power, and we as a Pan-Africanist, we have every right to be concerned with it. Africa, after all, is the richest continent on the face of the earth properly organized should be the most powerful continent on the face of the earth. Therefore, our drive towards power is clear. We want power, and we can only have power through the organized masses. Of course, capitalism, a system which in deforming our thinking always seeks to make it appear as if the organized masses is some unattainable goal, 
Even the other day, when speaking to his sister, who uh, sister has been involved in uh, activities over a period of years, she said, Kwame uh, Ture, uh, so you, when you say a mass party, what do you mean? I said, I mean a mass party. She said, but the APRP goes everywhere in England, they go in the Caribbean, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the United States, in Africa, and they're always saying about a mass party. What do you mean? I said, every African in the world inside our party. She said, are you going to get that? I said, that's what I'm working for. And if I don't get it, my granddaughter going to get it. But I'm working for it. <laughs> Her disbelief comes from the fact that capitalism tells us that, well, you can be scientific about everything except human nature. That people are so different, they have such different tastes, such different tra-la-la-la, that you can't bring them together under the same roof. This is a lie. We will never tire of saying it. Capitalism does not lie some of the time. It lies all of the time. When it tells the truth, it's a result of a double lie. <coughs> it's a logical fact. It's a logical fact. So capitalism has this belief that you can't organize all the people around the same thing. That's not true. You can organize all the people around one thing. Truth. Now, what capitalism will try to make it appear as if the truth is not one truth, but anybody can have the truth. This is stupidity. Nobody's born with the truth inside of them. If they were, they wouldn't need to live. We come to know the truth from outside of us. Some people think that they know the truth because they were born to know the truth. That's a lie. You know the truth from constant struggle against lies. That's how you know the truth. Constant struggle against lies. For example, they try to make it appear as if we Africans will not arrive at uniting ourselves even around even the question around our identity. Well, you may call some of them Africans, but some call themselves black, some still call themselves colored, some that's fact they do that. But this is because they've been miseducated by a system which seeks to keep us divided. And this is the truth. And this is the truth. Obviously, we cannot be, all of us, so many different things. We must be one thing. Of course, for our party, there's no question. As for the United African Movement, we're Africans. End of discussion. End of discussion. This struggle is not an easy struggle. The struggle to go from Negro to Black was a difficult struggle. Capitalism did everything to roll it back. He even had us confused. I'm not black, look at me, I'm brown colored. Yes. I'm not black, I got Indian blood in me. What nonsense they didn't have us say just to run away from the truth. We told them then, it is more difficult to go from Negro to black than it is to go from black to African. Many people criticized us for our efforts. Oh, in the 1970s, we had our last press conference, we said, we're going to put the word Africans on the lip of every African in America and we're not going to use the capitalist media press. And we have done it and we have not used the capitalist media press. As a matter of fact, the capitalist media press, in trying to stop us from going to Africans in America, tried to throw out African Americans. They did it. We saw the whole scene. It's our job, we followed it carefully. Of course, they want to say African-Americans, of course, that keeps us exactly where we are. If you're African-American, you're obviously not the same like an African-Kenyan. And certainly not the same like an African-Brazilian. And certainly not the same like an African-Trinidadian, etc., etc., etc. But once you're just African, ain't no question. Ain't no question. You African, yeah, where you were born? Trinidad. You African, yeah, where were you born? Uganda. You African, yeah, where were you born? Egypt. You African, yeah, all Africans. Once you have proper identity, one of your biggest problems is solved. Mr. Diddy. Back. Once again, let me remind you, you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. I am your host, Brother Hatim. This is Freestyle Nia. And 
course you know this is a Heart of a Simba production. <laughs> Lion didn't feel like roaring. Well, we strive to blow up those old paradigms. <laughs> now, listen up. We're about to get into this. About to get into this inauguration speech. You know what I'm saying? Try again, Lady J. 614-556-4535. Let's get the conversation jumped off. Just like share, my people, share. We are need to start building up our media empire because this man is going to give us plenty of material. Because he is the richest and the dirtiest player in the game. The Rolex wearing, red tie wearing, kiss stealing, crotch grabbing. Son of a gun. <laughs> Listen, all right. So let's go check out this. Uh, let's check out this inauguration. This call is being recorded. I just was joined. Let me guess. Is that Lady J? What's going on? Mm, not much. Okay, what's up? You called in. Let's talk. talking about yeah. you talking about the president the president trump yeah. the great yeah. great pumpkin is in the white house and i am celebrating because this is a time where we have no choice but to come together thank you thank you i'm celebrating but yo i want to look at his inauguration speech we go through it piece by piece talk about it break it down have a good conversation about it you know what I'm saying? Because it's important that we look at some of the things he's saying, some of the things that they're doing, because he's already in office signing executive orders and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff may change pretty rapidly, right? But we have been in preparations, at least those in my tribe. We have been in preparations for this type of stuff for years, right? We have, I have an epiphany. Go ahead. I have an epiphany today. Go ahead. I don't agree, but go ahead. And, it, and it's all politics. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um, eight years ago, they put Barack Obama in um, in office. Uh, I've seen, you know, I haven't been alive as long as you have, but I've seen his election revolution in the life, right? I've seen it on MTV. I've seen it taken to another level, right? Mm-hmm. So I watched.
but this woman said, how is he a role model? Then on this show, I have people call in and I have people vow never to listen to me. So I've never supported any politician, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't do politics and I try to stay away from religion best I can, especially when I have a platform, right? But, right. So, but we, you I know, was, but you know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get on all that eventually, because those are okay, things so, those things that hold us apart. But go ahead. And so yeah, 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 and that's why I avoid them because if we're gonna talk about nation building, we're gonna come up with with um, solutions, a solution based, you know, uh, situation. We can't spend our time saying I'm better than you, I'm smarter than you, I'm. You know what I'm saying? You got to do this and, and giving people all these. But well, anyways, I'm going to move on. So we, um, you know, I do this show. I lose followers behind it. It was obvious from the show, and the show is still on blog talk. It's probably a mildly hilarious show. If, you know, I get, you know how I get. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so now today, you know, with the elect, I, I watched what happened, and I believe that the way that Donald Trump they, they 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 have placated us. So the way he comes to office, because I hear people asking this question, is that people don't go vote. They they've lost their they really lost their uh, their 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 belief in the system now. Because here we had a black man as president, and people are claiming he did nothing for black people, right? So we've seen that as our last chance, right, at changing America, at, at doing something for us. And he let us down. So now we're just like, fuck it, right? So we don't even go vote this time. I, um, I, my, on my social media, on my social media, I see my, um, my, my peers, you know, people who I respect and their opinion, I see them advocating and encouraging people to black out on an election day to not vote, right? They're, they're impressing this. They're spreading this. And I have a boycott spirit, you know, so I'm I'm ready to, you know, black out at any minute, I guess. But whatever I can do for, you know, as far as social, uh, 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 my, uh, my political stance, right? Right. So I'm ready. But I didn't feel like that was a smart decision because though I'm not concerned, though I know the president, that is a political office. Politics mean many tricks, so I, you know, I gotta know what it is. I wasn't disappointed in Obama, but what about our local officials? You know, so I wasn't in favor of it, but people didn't vote. So this is how Donald Trump takes office. So uh, well, slow down, slow down. Hey, wait, 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 because you got, you got, you, you covered a lot of good points. Now we ain't got, can, can I, can I comment on one? Just. Yeah. I'm not going to say I disagree, but I feel a little bit different about people getting out to vote because the same people that voted before, a lot of them did go out and vote. It wasn't a matter of people not voting or black people blacking out because a lot of people that didn't vote didn't vote the first time nor the second time. Or they might have voted the first time and didn't vote the second time. You know what I'm saying? I'm, th I'm thinking that we say a lot of our, a lot of black people don't vote. I'm guaranteeing you, and we know for a fact that a lot of peop, white people, a lot of West Asians wasn't voting. But they had, they saw opportunity, and they came out in mass. So it didn't matter how many of us voted. Mm -hmm. You understand uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, Go ahead. So, so I'm going to bet you differ on that. I'm gonna Go ahead. Just in, That's just what the show for. understand 
Hold on, hold on. Let me let me see. let me see. I got a question for you. Why isn't Donald Trump qualified? What are the qualifications of being the president of the United States? Now, for anybody get on my time, wait on, before anybody get on this timeline and start talking about being a Trump supporter, I don't support none of them motherfuckers. I don't trust none of them. Just keeping all what qualifies somebody to be I, president I, of the United States. Say, We have we haven't been able we don't know what his financial finances are. We do know that he had many bankruptcies. We know that he had many failed businesses. You know, one business just settled out of court, um, or you know, just lost, either lost or settled out of court because he was conning people as far as the um, Donald Trump college thing. You know what I'm saying? So he's not really a, a good businessman. The okay, so, the, the but piece but going back, go back to because I don't want you to lose your train of but please, enlighten me on what are the qualifications of becoming president, of being a president. And then, and, and, and see, but then, the, well, cool. I'm going to look at my textbook, but I'm going to tell you what, what my... That's all I want. I don't care about the, I, I don't care about the, I don't care on. about the, I don't care about the textbook. I okay. care about what Lady J is going well, to tell me what the, yeah, what she I feel the qualifications are. I, I wasn't, I wasn't drinking on any but I was drinking, so I'm not. I'm not as sharp. But what, what bothers me is his lack of under his lack of understanding of government, right? Government, the government piece. All right. So you know I'm gonna get you on that one, but go ahead. I'm just letting you know. So my issue, you know, I'm thinking: Has he been a senator? Has he been a congress? Has he done? But that's not those. Those. I, I don't get it. Those are not. Those are not necessary steps be, to become president of the United States. You're, I didn't say, I said for me, I didn't say they're, they're, they're not necessary steps. I'm saying for me, what See, but, make me most so, comfortable now, is for him to have the extensive understanding of policy and, and government. But hold on. And that sort, and he just, I put you in charge of the Giami tribe right now. You don't know the miss. You don't know the ranking system. You don't know anything. What would be the first thing that you would do? Yeah, what would be the first thing? What would be the first, first thing? Wanna... Right. You you are in charge. Let's say we got a close that door, please. Let Let's say you got we got we got a thousand members, and I say, hey, now, Lady J, you are in charge of this tribe. What's the first thing? You don't know the men. I'm not going to hire people that are, are familiar, and I'm going to tell you why not. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I can't, I'm drawing a blank on which, um, which king did this in England, um, like the name, but I'm telling you somebody has done it before, and they steered him wrong just so that they could take the throne, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Donald Trump decided. Hold on, decide, Donald Trump decided to run for run for president. He studied what it takes or what past presidents have done. He studied lightly some policies. Now he did exactly. See, because I want you to think about this. He did exactly what you said that you would do. He didn't go and hire necessarily insiders. He went and pulled people around him. To do the jobs and to inform him to, exactly. in, in the way that he felt was necessary. So he was smart enough to go out and get other people. You see what I'm saying? Because it's like. But that doesn't, again, that doesn't guarantee. It didn't guarantee it for Obama. They're scaring him. But, okay, so let's say you said it was. I mean, it, it's the same thing Obama did. Obama got, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, Obama. About, uh, Donald Trump got a lot of experience in politics. So let's look at the difference that they did with Obama. They were from a young age. They knew they want to put Obama in that presidency. They knew when they were going to put Obama in that presidency because it's all a conspiracy. 
if it's a conspiracy, if it's a conspiracy, then Donald Trump's of it. Because anybody could take. Now, okay, so so it don't matter. So really, no, I'm not. See, no, I'm not gonna say that you're wrong. I'm gonna say that you made a choice, right? But the piece we have to do is we have to talk what. Let me finish. We have to talk with our children about this new presidency because a lot of kids in urban communities have heard horrible things about this man, and they already on edge. So we got to have some type of communication. We got to have some type of discussion with them about what's, what's about to happen. He's a Mexican. Wait, he's a Mexican that got on the boat. He said a boat. That's what he said. I mean, and that's how you know. Wait, hold on. Let me tell you some of the stuff that's floating around Moscow. Donald Trump is responsible for killing Mal- uh, Martin Luther. King. <laughs> Stop playing with me. I, I laugh too, but this is this is what's floating around the schools. That's why we got to talk with our kids about the situation. Like we got to be, we got to be forthright with them. Not, not that you need to show the inauguration, right? But we got to have discussion around who this man is because because he's such a polarizing figure. He is somebody that we can use to move people in the direction that we need to move in. That's all I'm saying. That for me, that's what I see. I see an opportunity. My ancestors taught me a long time ago, a roadblock is nothing but a step towards your greatness. And I'm going to step on this great pumpkin, and I'm moving, right? Because think about this, Lady J. You got a podcast just like I do. This man for the next four years has guaranteed us material almost every day. Good material, right? I mean, we just go through his inauguration today. This motherfucker done gave me shows for about three weeks. You know what I'm saying? The way he described America in, inaug- in, in, in his inauguration address, dude, it sound like it sound like a third world country. I'm telling you right now, everybody, whether you're listening live, go and listen to Ric Flair. This is who we elected. This man remind has been bothering me. And son just told me when I got home and start working with my ambrosia, listen to some old Ric Flair tapes. I'm telling you, this dude was 
it was set up, I mean, I'm put it this way, it was set up this way for me, right? My generation, the generation after me, and the generation after that, all those individuals are older, old, and then a the generation after that, all of them are old enough to vote. A lot of those young men was raised on wrestling. Nobody was really upset with with President Obama because President, I mean, uh, President uh, Trump, because he sounds like the wrestlers that we grew up looking up to. You always, I mean, really, go and listen to Ric Flair. The Rolex, the Rolex wearing, red tie wearing. Kiss, uh, kiss stealing. The cross is grabbing. You know what I'm saying? Dirtiest player in the game. You know what I'm saying? This is the bombastic individual that we elected, and and I and, and I'm saying I think Donald Trump got in more for entertainment purposes than anything else. Because it's funny as hell when you really think about it, right? I mean, you you would have never thought it. Me and you last year when we was talking, we we never nobody even considered, didn't see this shit coming from a I mean, didn't see it coming at all. You know what I'm saying? And and the people that voted him in are people who was raised on media. And had access to entertainment 24 hours a day. So they don't want a president that could talk to them and lie to them kindly. They want somebody that's going to talk to them like a wrestler. They want somebody that's going to talk to China like a wrestler. They want somebody that's going to talk to Russia like a wrestler. They want entertainment. They want drama. And what does Donald Trump bring? Obama was always calm and cool, and everybody, quote unquote, respected him for that, right? He's not the angry black man. He's not the typical angry black man when he should have been mad as hell. You know what I'm saying? He should have been. He he, he should express some of that anger with, with, with him being blocked in the way he was. But you know what he basically enforced was the image that we have to fit in and we have to do everything in, in the proper fashion to make things happen. Donald Trump's ass just got up there and made shit happen. That's what people, that's what, you know, and, and white people need to be sold a dream. The West Asians, because they like, I I can't support my family no more. You know what I'm saying? P pay hasn't risen in 20 years. You a teacher, you already know. When we was young, when, well, it might even not have been when you was young. When I was young, a teaching profession, they made good money. Now y'all making the same money that they was making back in 1970, and that ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? It, it I don't ain't... believe that. Huh? You say you don't believe that? I don't believe that. I do. I, matter of yeah, fact, I, I got, I, it ain't, I ain't even asking you to believe it. I'm asking you to research it. It's a fact. I know they getting paid when they were paid in the 70s. You are getting paid what they was paid in the 70s. Are you saying like a inflation? No. I'm saying, if you look at what teachers was making back in 1970, between 1970 and 1987, you are making the same amount that they were making. What were they Probably about thirty-five to 45000 a year. I see you got quiet. No, I don't believe that. Okay. You don't I, have to. I know plenty of teachers make a lot more. Okay. Now. Okay, I I know a lot that don't. Matter of fact, I know a lot of teachers yeah. that work two jobs. You might be one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Uh, but, mm. When I was young, when I was young, teachers didn't have to work two jobs. When I was young, teachers raised a family on their money. Teaching was an honorable profession. I It ain't not it. Well, let me. I ain't gonna say. I ain't gonna say an honorable profession. It was a little bit more honored. Right now, it's not an honored profession. You got parents. Every time, every time I talk to a parent, everybody got experience on teaching, and everybody's an expert on how to control the classroom. You know what I'm saying? Sending these badass kids to school that they haven't raised. 
I'm just saying. So now we got teachers that got to control 25 little people who have been raised and they're using terms like your Hispanic kid to describe themselves. I'm a savage. How the fuck are you supposed to educate a savage? How you supposed to get that from the, from the same place? From the same. They got that from the same place that people got the idea of having Donald Trump as president from the media. That's out here poisoning our minds. That's where they got it from. They are see this. This is what people understand. The Russians didn't interfere at all with the with the voting booths. See, when people talk about Russians messed with the elections, they ain't messed with the equipment. They mess with your minds, supposedly. Just the idea, right? They hack your mind. For all we know. According to the way they're talking, when you listen to it and you listen deeper than just what the, the and, and you start reading, they're talking about the Russians hacking minds. So this means that this plot could have been unleashed 15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? To put, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't necessarily I don't necessarily believe that it's me. To believe, because like this, is like I told you before, one of the reasons I have a lot of problems with the conspiracy thing, because I'm very conceited. You know what I'm saying? And you don't think nobody's smarter than you? Goddamn right. You know what I'm saying? Given, given the 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 the, the right foot and the right foot, I believe that I can compete with almost, I could not almost with anybody. So I find it hard to believe that a motherfucker is wise enough to predict everything. That's going to happen within the next 15 years. That's why. That's why we have crashes every 10 years, and none of the economic and none of the economic masters even see it coming. Yes, baby. Can I have some grapes? Yes, you can have some grapes. Gina, can you help her get some grapes? I don't even know why y'all up. Go ahead. You know, you, you do you that's know? Why I'm not, that's why I'm not. Do I'm you? Not do you know? Like do you, I believe that some people who own the wealth are pulling all the strings. Same people built this country, been running this country, stopping you know, and everything from the beginning of time. They will destroy all this shit. Well, I'm just too conceited to say that they smart me. I don't believe that shit. I believe. That West Asians are the luckiest on the planet. Luck has drained out. Why? Because they have put, they have put Ric Flair in the White House. They have put the Rolex, Rolex wearing, red tie wearing, kiss stealing, crotch grabbing, mofo in the White House. The jet setting, top of the line wearing, Donald Trump. We have, a, we have elected a cartoon character. We have elected a professional wrestler. And I'm saying, I, I, and I'm saying this, I, I'm saying this. Now, this is what I'm saying. Me, this is how arrogant I am. I'll say shit like this. He could promise these white people the moon. But this motherfucker will not be able to deliver. See, because this is what bothers me, right? I want everybody to think about this. There are no more manufacturing jobs. He not opened the coal mines. It's not 1845. These motherfuckers want him to open coal mines. They want him to bring back manufacturing. They got robots that do all that shit. Why am I going to open a coal mine and put motherfuckers that I'm going to have to pay insurance premiums on for the next 100 years? When I could put a machine in there to do the exact same shit that you do. As a matter of fact, fuck even digging coal. I got machines that I got machines and people that's coming up more efficient ways to produce electricity every day. Right? He sold everybody a dream. Right? People want a dream. People want to be assured. And that's what they got. Let me tell you this. I don't I don't 
Well, hold on. For those that for those that want to join the conversation, number is 614-556-4535. Once again, that's 614-556-4535. Join the conversation. Go ahead, Lady J. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would have mattered if the football See, now, now, but, but it, that does matter. That does matter. Hold on. That does matter because you're saying that now. Right, but there's another five million people that still believe. See, we know that people still believe in the system, and the, the true barrier is not the politics but the economics, not even the economics, the currency. Right, when people are not really believing that this system works anymore, it won't be about the vote, it's going to be about the dollar. When motherfuckers really stop believing in America because the, the one thing that holds America together is the power of Imani. This is why I say we need to start talking about these principles more. It's the power of belief. Once we dive that from the system, the first thing that we're going to put down is the dollar. I'm not fucking with the dollar. I'm not taking the dollar. Nigga, you better go out there and get me some uh, purple rocks. I want purple rocks. That's the currency we have decided that we're going to use. Better yet, I like purple ties. Bring me ties. We still the system, even if we don't vote, if we still use the money. That's the barometer, right? That's where the crash is coming. See, Donald Trump, Donald Trump is in a position now where when you look at what's, what's been going on, like I told you before, before 1987, it was a crash. Then in 1987, 88, there was a crash. Then in um, 1997 or 1998, there was a crash. Then in 2008, there was a crash. So if you look at the damn pattern, it tells you that there is a possibility that within the next year, there's going to be an economic crash. The question that we need to answer, rather than who we voted for or who in office, is are they just like they shot on the ATM? Are you ready for when motherfuckers get that psychotropic medicine that they like candy? You want to know what? You want to know what? Go ahead. But that means you're going to have to sleep outside. You're going to have to go outside for a couple of days. But you know, you know what you said? That, um, okay, you just, you know what you said was, you just, did you, oh, okay. What you just said was, uh, that, 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 the Americans, what did you say about operating off the money? America is based all governments, all Groups are based on Imani, the belief that you have in the group. And the way that we manifest the, that belief is through the currency because it allows us to exchange goods. There's no okay, need. So I'm going to tell you why I'm going to be okay because I have a, a, a strong sense of uh, Imani. And it's not in the place. So I, I consider myself to be a proud American. And I believe that people need to understand that ain't nobody ever promised them shit in America. They just promised them the pursuit of happiness. They said you could pull yourself up from your bootstraps. I come from nothing. I come from nothing. In the last two, three years, I've doubled, doubled my income, make more money now than I've ever made in my life. And it wasn't easy getting here, but I worked my ass off. And all those, 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 those addictions and this guy and the other. I, I work for that. That's 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 my that's my belief in faith. That's my. But hold on, hold on. Right? Let me I say this. Belief. Wait. I have a belief. I, but now, but let me let let me let me clarify, because individual oh. faith on a tribal, uh, a tribal, um, city, state, nation level is good. But it's not what keeps the society going because not that you have a strong faith in... Wait, hold on. Let me finish. Not that you have a strong faith in you. You have to have a strong faith in the team that you're on. What makes America... What makes America strong is the fact that we not only believe in America, but a lot of other people believe in America. And they believe in America enough to want to, want to hold our currency. Right? The, the, okay. So it's okay. the group. I don't know. It's the I group. Don't know much. 
You don't have to. It's just it's just it's just this. If we can't exchange it. If it's a hundred dollars, it's not pure gold, baby. Gold is trading for. Let me tell you this. The, 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 the coin is worth more than printing on it, for sure, right? But guess, guess who's on Lady Liberty? Who's on there? Who? It's, it's, it's a black. What? Right? What? Ain't? I don't, I don't know this one. So what do I mean? So, so it don't, even, so it don't matter. They put some it's random. Listen, 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 it, for, now, I'm just, let me be honest with you, sis, listen, they put random woman, right, okay, cool, name one, maybe she's ma- not random, maybe okay. I just don't know who she is, okay, cool, well, I mean, you got, you got Google, Google that shit, because I want you to understand what you're saying, they just put a random woman, somebody just created this woman, probably got a leave on, god damn it, you know what I'm saying, put no. the, Okay, no, I'm going to look up the coin. You, you, I'm going to look up the coin. I've seen it through folks' vocabulary. I was showing Chef vocabulary with my kids today. They do a weekend where they sum up all these events. Not, that's not what I'm talking about. Here she go. Well, I mean, no, I ain't got her. But the gold price per ounce, because a, a, a typical coal, a typical coin per ounce, because they they mint the coins, dollar coins in 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 an ounce. Gold is trading right now at one thousand two hundred and thirteen dollars. So there's no way that the one ounce coin is a hundred dollars. Go now. I'm, It don't make sense. I see her. Um, black is called she Black Lady Liberty. So why not just put my eye? And it's it's a random chick. I'm just saying it's just, it's a random chick. Lady Liberty de- depicted as a black woman on a hundred dollar gold coin. I'm hard to satisfy. I mean, I, hey, I'm just saying. They put a random lady that 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 more than likely somebody that looked like you didn't draw her. Now let me say this. So they say, let wait, hold on. Let me let me stop. Lady Liberty depicted as a black woman on a hundred dollar gold coin. All right, but Lady Liberty, Walking Liberty, half dollar in gold. Is trading for nine hundred thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. All right, I mean, okay, I, I'm gonna be happy because Lady Liberty, and, and I'm looking at her hair. I'm looking at her hair. That's that Brazilian shit. She got that Brazilian shit in her hair. Mm. <laughs> hey, Lady Liberty got that Brazilian shit. Actually, they kind of look like, they look like, well, they're not locks. Okay. I see the coin. I see the coin. But if it's $100, baby, I, I, um, let me see. Let's go back to the per gram. Let's see. Per gram is $39 per gram of gold. By the way, gold is trading too high. Those people out there that's interested in investing in gold. This is just Brother Hot Tim. I'm not an expert, but I'm saying that if silver is trading for like, Eighteen dollars per ounce, maybe, and then gold is one thousand two hundred thirteen dollars per ounce. There's something wrong, but you do need to be investing in things like gold and silver. 
so that when this shit do happen, you do have a little bit of currency, actual money to trade, right? Because people ain't going to accept some of them dollars you got. I'm just letting y'all know. Just letting y'all know. All right. So, on, um, she mad at me because I'm not accepting um, the Lady Liberty um, talking points and shit. Um, let's go and look a little bit at this. Uh, right, let me tell you something. You already want to tell me something. Tell What we got? What we got? I'm gonna ban you. I'm gonna ban you with this Uncle Tom shit because you really heard about this Uncle Tom shit. We gonna. I'm going to pay for some counseling so we can get you over this whole. Cause you've been screaming Uncle Tom since I met you. Ain't nobody calling nobody Uncle Tom no more. They don't even use that no more. Listen, listen, me just being, me just being able to stream live. I got my own TV show. I got my own podcast, just like you. This is hope. Now, the issue I'm saying is, at least with Harriet Tubman, you have a backstory that you can defend. With the Lady Liberty coin, hold on, with the Lady Liberty, you don't have a backstory. See, when you bring out symbols... That's not you. I seen the coin. That ain't you. I seen the coin. I just looked it up. That ain't you. God damn it. I know what you look like. That's not you. That's not you. Okay. I'm just saying that. Cool. So what's the backstory? You see what I'm saying? Because when, when they put out symbols, you got to understand when they put out symbols, it's a purpose. We on pur- Well, right now, we're not no longer in purpose. Right now, we are in Kuumba. But when you put stuff out, there's a purpose, especially when you're dealing with a system, when you're dealing with a culture. There's a reason you bring something out, right? Now, we could go and we could drape our meaning over it and take it over, and that's your task if that's what you want to take on. You could take on Lady Liberty, and you could defend her to your last breath. But please understand the strategy of putting out somebody that nobody know. Right? Uh, uh, Brother Esau, right now, I guess it's just open talk. What I was about to talk about, what we're going to move to is eventually looking at the inauguration. We're going to talk about some Trumpetude, Right? But right now, the sister, the sister brought up the conversation about, I don't even know how we got on it. So when you listen to Giami Journey, just know that we're going to free flow. Now, if you want to call in, we can talk about what y'all want to talk about. Oh, it's Freestyle Nia. Did I say Freestyle Friday? It's Freestyle Nia. Okay, cool. It's Freestyle Nia. Thank you for correcting me. Oh, shit. Hold on. One of my boss. 
bottles just blew up. Give me a second. This that real shit this time, sister. You might need to try this. Listen, I just bottled this. I just bottled this. This batch right here. I just bottled, not bottled it. I'm letting it sit, but I put, I had too much. So I had to use my old fashioned bottles like this. This is a d thick class that's designed to hold pressure. So I wanted to see how long it could do it. I usually got overnight, but one of the bottles just blew up. So this is a very active culture that I have right now. So it's on fire. I'm about to go in and clean that shit up. But hey, it's worth it. Listen. So now, can I get into the um inaugural address? Um No nobody cares. Damn. Just because I don't give a damn about Lady Liberty? The 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 fake gold coin? You ain't even real gold. At a hundred dollars. Listen to me. If it's a hundred dollar gold coin, it's no way in hell that it's real. I'm just telling. I'm just. I'm just trying to keep it real with you. It's for coin collectors, right? It's for coin collectors. No Why do you, get this baby? Listen, listen. Black, black folks, listen. Collectors. Black folks don't need to be collecting coins. Not not just for aesthetic you value. You, like, wait, hold on. Time that? out. Time out. Now, let, back story. Back story. <laughs> let, let me go back. She spent a 1965 quarter that I gave her instructions not to touch. Now, for those that don't know, in 19, between 1964 and 1970, they stop producing real silver coins. So when you find a quarter that is 1965, it's not 25 cent. It is a quarter of an ounce or almost a quarter of an ounce of silver. If silver costs $18, what is a quarter of $18? A quarter of $18 for you that do not understand math is almost $5. So she took a quarter went in and bought some goddamn candy with four dollars and some odd cent so you goddamn right I, I she lucky we didn't fight in my car i gave her specific i don't like what you just said what you said black people should not first you just told me that we should be investing in things like precious metals like gold all right so no 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 you you're 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 listening wrong. You're li you're listening wrong. I said black people need to invest in precious precious metals. So you so then therefore what that means is that that shit that you are advertising right now is not a precious metal. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. I, no, I, I'm not full of shit. That coin is full of shit. You you. That's that alcohol. That's that alcohol you've been sipping on. It ain't, hey baby. This is. Listen, listen. I'm a master. What well, my fault? I am proficient at my. Ta I'm. I'm proficient at my thing. I'm. I. I, I fear no callers. Listen. No, I wouldn't. I don't even care. You, we can bring that up too. Because since you want to bring up, because you like bringing up my business. Wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, brother Hot Tim. Wait, hold on, brother Hot Tim. Brother Hot Tim fired a summer worker because she spit one of my quarters after I gave her instructions not to touch my money. First off, she violated me when she got in my vehicle and took my quarter after I told her not to touch my quarter. Then on top of that, it was a 19... Are you saying that you collect coins? 
Yes, I collect precious metal. And but hold on, hold on. See, I'm tired of listen. I'm gonna boycott you and your half baked logic. I want, I want. Let me, let me help you out. All right. Once again, let me explain. Between 1964 and 1970, they phased out making gold coins. Up until 1964, quarters, dimes, half dollars, if they even had half dollars then, and whole silver coins were made from 0.999% silver. After they took us off of the gold standard, they started phasing out real precious metals in coin making. And they start giving us the bullshit that we have right now. Right? Like your collector's coin, Lady Liberty, a hundred dollar gold piece, and silver trace for because that 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 coin, that coin is a ounce size. So you're telling me that it's a hundred dollar gold coin when an ounce of a ounce, which is the regular size of one of those collector's coins, an ounce of gold costs over one thousand two hundred dollars. You telling me it's a hundred dollars? I'm gonna buy them all up if it's real, but I'm guaranteeing. No, they don't cost hundreds of dollars. They don't cost hundreds of dollars. Because, they but, but I'm telling you right money. now. But then they wouldn't put a hundred dollars on it. You, you got to understand. See, you're not you you you're not dealing with coins. I deal with coins, right? When you go buy old coins, they have a dollar on it, right? When you go buy old silver coins, they have a dollar on it. All of the coins that are pure silver or pure gold don't put a, 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 a denomination on it. They put a weight. But, you know, I you know maybe I know this because I buy the shit, right? What I'm trying to tell you, know, you why is... Did you sell, why did you just sell the people? Did I just, did I just sell the people? I, listen, you got nervous because you already know you answered your question. See... Lady Jane, one of the first things that I'm going to make sure you learn is how to just go on and be wrong, baby. It's okay. You don't have to be right, and you don't have to win every argument. Listen to me. Let me explain it to you one more time. Okay? Let me back up. Right? So, early in the 60s, they started moving America off of the gold standard. Thank you, Mr. Issa. Her math is off. She she not even hearing me. You said what? They moved us off. I did. I am asking your question. You don't want to hear the answer because you don't want to be wrong. I, I dig it. I dig it. I understand. I understand. That's that fighting Pisces, confused dreamer shit that you on. I understand. No, you and you're young and you can't see. So I will take the fact that I'm old and I can't hear. But please take the fact that you are young and you can't see. I'm trying to, I'm painting a picture for you, baby. And you're missing the goddamn scope. You, you're missing, you're missing the masterpiece that I'm giving you. Right? I'm going to take you to the coin store with me. Right? So that you can see what I'm talking about. Listen. Gold, gold, they no longer put a price on it. Now, you can find old gold dollars, but hell, gold hasn't been a dollar since the 1930s. You you understand what I'm saying? When I say go out and buy precious metals and buy coins, I'm not saying go out here and buy this bullshit that they selling. Because the shit that they selling on TV that they advertising, that's not real. If you, cause, I believe that. huh? I believe that. Now, I believe that. so now this is the issue. The only reason that I'm saying that black folks need to go and buy these coins is if, in a pinch, you could trade them. Then, see, see, aesthetic value means nothing when hunger is running afoot in the country. Nobody is going to pay you a premium price. For some fake shit just because it make them feel good when their kids are hungry. They're going to look at that coin and give you, I, I'm not giving you shit for that. 
You can't get no flour. You can't get no water. You can't get no shit. But I walk up with one of my quarters, and they look at that quarter and be like, oh, shit. This is a 1962 quarter. Shit, you get $4 worth of shit. Well, well since it's a crisis, uh, listen, they trade for this um, $15 for a quarter ounce of silk. Mm. Who gonna eat? The dude with the real silver quarter or the dude with the fake gold black woman on a fake piece of gold? Oh my god. Okay, I'm over it. No, you're not. I don't want you to be over it. I want you to understand the logic. I want you to understand and apply the wisdom. This 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 is a, this is exactly why I never told you about the forty eight laws of power. Exactly why. You, because you're going to argue with me until you pick it up and start studying it yourself. You never told me about it. You did, you did tell me about it, but you never told me that if I read it, it would help me understand my condition. That it would help me understand why I was sought after a uh, 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 number one enemy. You you didn't tell me that, so you definitely asked me had I read the book. I think you recommended it, but you didn't say to me, if you read this book, you will understand your condition. And I think that you knew that I, 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 I do believe that you knew what was going on. You knew that those, the, the way those laws were panning out for me. And you probably knew that if I read it, it would help me understand that you, you probably didn't think it would help me, like, behave differently. But I well, think you, you, you it, do you I know, you, you knew. Do you know what the first, you know what the first, now, once somebody, uh, Brother Esau at, told me to ask you a question. He said, ask her this question. Ask her, is this gold coin worth $1,213? Is that coin? So, okay. So, yes, 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 that's fine. So I'll answer your question. So I just learned about this today. But it, it's, I, I it's advertised a, as a... a Go ahead, answer I was showing my kids a video. I was showing my kids a vocabulary video where they wrap up everything that happened in the week, right? Mm-hmm. And they mentioned this coin. And in the rap, I got a drink when I'm talking to her, y'all. It, it tells them that it, that it costs a lot more, but it doesn't say how much it costs, right? So it does talk about its value versus what's printed on the coin. She ain't hear me, Essa. She ain't hear me at all. Listen, now let's get back to the 48 laws of power. Can I just say it's worth $1,000? I'm, I'm, I'm about to. to then why is it called a $100 coin? What the fuck? Why is it called a $100 coin then? It, you, it, it said it on the internet. You said it. It says it's a $100. Are there any other hundred? Is this the first $100 coin? I don't know anything about coins. You just said that I fired somebody for selling one of my coins. So this means that I know just maybe a little bit more than you about coins. I'm telling you that if it's if if it's labeled if it's labeled a hundred dollar coin, baby, listen to me. If it's labeled a hundred dollar coin, right, it's worth a hundred dollars unless unless. Unless this coin is old because there's no reason to put a hundred dollars on a coin that they just start producing this year if it's solid gold. That's stupid. So my, my question is, Mr. Um, Mr. Hakim, what is the value of the coin? Is it worth a hundred dollar coin? Are there other hundred dollar coins? I personally do not know about hundred dollar coins. I know uh -huh. about, I, hold on, hold on, listen to me, and I'm going to say it, let me, let me say this, there are, matter of fact, let's just say this, new gold coins and new silver coins are not done by denomination, they're done by weight, that's how they, so even the silver eagles, they used to be called silver dollars. They're not even called silver dollars no more. They're called silver eagles. And you pay an extra premium because they are produced by the U.S. Mint. Right? 
So if it costs eighteen dollars an ounce, you will have to buy. Uh, it'll cost you about twenty dollars to buy one of the silver eagle coins. They don't even call them silver dollars no more. And you, you go to the coin store and say, "I want some silver dollars," right? And you have to buy coins that they made back before nineteen sixty five. And the only reason they labeled a dollar because when they was produced and when they came out, they were worth a dollar. But if you have a gold coin that's coming out today that says it's worth a hundred dollars, it's not trading on the value, the amount of gold in it, it's trading on the aesthetic value. And aesthetics mean nothing in an emergency situation. This is why people buy gold and silver when the stock market is not doing good because gold and silver are real currencies. They will be traded and recognized all over the world and you will be able to always eat if you got gold and silver. That's all I'm trying to tell you, baby. That's it. Right? So now back to the 48 Laws of Power. Right? I figured that me mentioning it to you saying, hey, you need to read this book, right? This, 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 how, this how I teach. I let people learn on their own. You got the book because if I don't force it on you, I would have put it in a class and, and had you read. You wouldn't have came. You'd have found a reason not to come. You know what I'm saying? But you start reading You start reading it on your own. I'm just telling you what I think. I could be wrong. You're right. Okay? Right? Because like I said, I say the same thing about the African tree of life. But until I start really producing the show, people didn't really see the value in African tree of life. I'm like, dude, you need to read this book. We need to have a study. No, we don't need to study that. And this motherfucker changing lives. The point I'm saying is this, right? When you was going through what you was going through, I kept trying to tell you, I kept trying to tell you that I'm going to handle it, right? So I'm trying to guide you through, but you just, you just honorary. You just honorary. You know what I'm saying? That's not true. That, that's you not true. just proved, you, you proved my point right now. You, you proved my point right now. Oh, and okay. I'm, I'm going to I don't That's owe why you. I said you owe me the other day. That's why I said you owe me. Because. What I owe you? Go ahead, explain. You owe me one. You owe me one. What I owe you? you why I owe you one? I, you owe me one because, because what did you say? You said I would take care of it. You, you didn't take care of it. No, time out. So you reading the, you reading the 48 Laws of Power? Time out. You reading the 48 Laws of Power. Are you reading it now? What law are you on right now? Four. Four. What does four say? What is? Um, go ahead. I'm, I'm only three. Yeah. All right. Cool. What? What, what is law three? Uh, law three is don't let no one know your intention. Okay. So now, do not let anyone know your intention. Right. So he goes in and he tells you why not to do that. He tells you. The, uh, he gives you a historical perspective of people who have used this and hear their intentions, but then he has, a, at the end, a negative of doing this as well, right? So now let me ask you a question. When you throw one of these laws in effect, do it work immediately? I'd imagine it doesn't. Mm. It takes time. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. So now... Check this out, baby. I, I I'm too old to be fighting for the short the short term. You wanted short term effects. Short term effects. You don't need to read the Forty Eight Laws of Power. You need to go get one of those pimping books out there that's available. You know, um, um, Long John Slim and 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 and, and Johnny White Hat or, or 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 the Art of the Deal by our president. Donald Trump, you you know what I'm saying? You want immediate effects, you need to, to get that. See, 48 Laws of Power is for nation builders. As nation builders, we realize that it takes time for stuff to happen. Things were being put in place, things was being revealed that if you would have hung on, you would have rose to victory. But you can say, all right, cool. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, cool, but hold on. See, all right, cool. So since we laying stuff on the table, baby, 
How many years? How many years was you there? Two. Two. How did you get through your first year? Horribly. Hmm. Hmm. How did you end up keeping your job the first year? If you went through and it was a horrible situation and, and things didn't work out quite right. Who told you that? Um, my supervisor, supervisor. Hmm. And why did he tell you that? She told me that. Why did she tell you that? Uh, because she, um, maybe, I, for lack of better words, she probably seen that I had some potential. Hmm. 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 Where was her office at? Right, but 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 where was her office at? Where was her office at? Where was her office? You ain't got to be specific. This between since we having a private conversation on Facebook. Where was her office at? Okay, all right. Listen, baby, like when it's not wise. Matter of fact, you just said, what's the law you studying right now? What's that law? Say that law again. Say the law that you're studying right now. The law that you're studying right now. Three. Three. What is it? Do not let others know your intentions. Okay. All right. So now, I'm going to leave it at that. See, because my whole piece was, I'm going to leave it at that. Because... My my issue is, baby, you have people looking out for you or have people looking out for you in ways that you didn't even understand, right? So you could thank whoever you want. You give whoever you want credit, right? But the point that I'm saying is, I've been at this shit for a long time, right? I've been at this shit a long time, Right? I go in and raise hell and see exactly what I want and reveal all my intentions about what the fuck I want to do. But no, I got to make sure that everybody around me is able to eat. That's my responsibility as a nation builder. And I try to bring everybody that I can with me, that at least that I could trust, that I know that have my back. And I try to make sure that it happens. Now, I want you to answer this question since you want to throw my business out. Am I being true to my shit? It is my team eating? I'd imagine so. No, ain't no goddamn imagine. Is my team eating or not? Maybe y'all not all eating at the same table, but I could imagine so. <laughs> so, as you see, you don't want to give it up, and I understand that's that Pisces shit. But you give it up when I'm. Di you don't. You're not allowed to speak at my funeral because you're going to be guilty. And you're going to be so guilt-ridden that you feel you're going to have to speak. And I'm going to have in my will, if somebody by the name of Lady Jane gets up and want to talk, shut her down. I'm going to put this on my video wheel. Be be because, because, because by the time I'm dead, you will have figured out. All right, cool. Who my team? Who my team? Who my team? You know my team. Jagna. Jagna. Okay. My ego is very big. My ego is very big, but a lot of people, want, a lot of people, unless I'm sitting on, unless I'm sitting on the radio seat, because you got to understand this, unless I'm sitting on here, I'm in character right now, right? You know, but in person, I'm a very humble and a nice person, and I'm very respectful. But 
while you playing checkers or playing chess, I'm playing man collar because I understand that there's people out here cutting the throat. Sometimes I have to stand up and be the sacrifice and let my throat get cut. Other times I'm cutting throats. But my, I'm playing a long range game, baby. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not in this shit for temporary. This is why. This is why for me, somebody like Donald Trump being in office don't mean shit because Donald Trump is just a four to eight year stay. It don't matter to me. It don't matter to the long range game, right? I agree. I agree. You see what I'm saying? I agree. Matter of fact, Donald Trump is gonna make me one of the most powerful elders in the world just because of his foolishness. If it, the way I think. You see what I'm saying? Like I said, man, it's like a lot of people's getting caught. Have you ever been wrong? I'm wrong all the time. I'm wrong all the motherfucking time. But this is the issue. I have, I have, I have learned. Go ahead. I'm what? Go ahead. I'm no, 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 no. I'm wrong all the goddamn time. But you know the difference between my wrong and other people's wrongs? Is that I could admit that I'm wrong and I could make course corrections on being wrong because I understand that the path to success is made from the dust of my mistakes. I, it's just that simple. Let's move on to our topic because you disagreed that you owe me. You said that you admit you owe me. You owe me. You owe me. See, that's the point. You owe me. One of my coworkers alleged that I don't care about American history because I am setting up shows about the history of the American people. I got a drink when I'm fucking with her, y'all. Anybody want to say it? I'm listening. About today? About the election. About today? I don't, I don't understand. You want me to break it down for you? You want me to break it down for you? It's the most pivotal. It's a pivotal election because this is the last throws of West Asians and being able for them to be supreme. This I don't like using the term, but this is the last throws of white supremacy, at least in this country. At least in this, at least in this country. I'm asking you, why would my, why would my Caucasian coworker tell me that this was like a pivotal moment? Did you just hear what I said? And it. Did you hear what I said? But what would be her rationale? How does your rationale? No. What would be her rationale? It's the same thing because for them, it's the curtain closing. For you, it's the curtain opening. So, you y'all looking at the same show? She's laughing at a different joke than you are. She's saying, that, "Hey, you need to laugh at this joke," but you're looking at it in a different way. I'm just saying, step back and see the whole goddamn play, right? Step back. So now, I now I went out to my car. I went out to my car. I went. I went out to my car to listen to it. I went to the room and I turned it on for the for 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 the people that was in my room, right? Because this is the point. This is the point. You have to hear what this man is saying. Did you? I mean, did, did we got to read the, We got to read this this inauguration speech. Did you hear the way he described America? And when he's talking about America, when you when when you hear how he's talking about America and how far it has fallen, right? This is. A pivotal moment because I want you to think about all the predictions. What were some of the predictions that you heard about as far as 2020? Do you remember? What's supposed to happen to America around 2020? Mm, yeah, I don't recall. I don't know. That America, I don't know America is getting closer and closer to looking like you. This is a pivotal. This, this, uh, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this 
This is a major, this is a major time, right? And what Donald Trump has done, Donald Trump has given people permission to speak their mind and do their thing, which means that finally you are going to be able to recognize your enemies because they no longer have to wear the mask. And those individuals whose heart are really sour against you have no reason to have to hold their tongue, which is a boon for you. It's beautiful. You should. I mean, I ain't going to say you should have, but it, it would have been a good thing for you to listen to what this man had to say coming in, listening to this inauguration. Right? Because, hey, America about to be yours, baby. He going to give it to you on a silver plate. Just like Obama gave it to them, he going to give it to us. You know why? Because they... They elected, they elected a wrestler for president. They, they elected Ric Flair and Vince McMahon as the president of the United States. God bless America. Only in America, as my man Don King would say, only in America. Right? And this is 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 a blessing. All we gotta do is take advantage of this shit. Because now, a lot of people's eyes are going to be open. Some of them are just going to be open temporarily, but the ones that's going to open up for real, it's going to be a powerful moment in history for us. Dude, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. You need to pay attention to this shit. Deported. Deported. Yeah, I, live, I teach all of my kids are from other countries. So I wasn't about to get, have a day full of having these conversations trying to read. Call in, that's the number, y'all. Exactly, because they never had to care before. See, this is the issue. They never had to care before. Listen, all I'm saying is this This is a moment. This, this is a great moment for us. We have an opportunity to build like we never did before. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to take the Nguza Saba Challenge so that you can start changing your mind because this opportunity, if we keep the same mind state, we're going to stay prisoners, right? So right now... consistent on my shit i ain't saying whether i voted or whether i didn't vote right but the point is thank god trump won god damn it listen and i know some of y'all mad right i don't care the point is we have an opportunity to move from point a to point z because this motherfucker is arrogant i love it i love it oh my god you know what i'm saying I know I could outsmart Ric Flair. I know I could do it. I could, I could, I could outthink the great pumpkin. I could do it. Right? You could do it. We could do it. Right? Stop being scared. You know what I'm saying? We just got to be safe. That's it. 
make it. We're going to cruise through this. You know what I'm saying? He's going to bring back manufacturing jobs that don't even exist no more. That's a bad motherfucker, boy. You know what I'm saying? He's going to open coal mines. This motherfucker is cold, bro. He's going to open coal mines. Anybody, y'all still got them coal burning stoves out there? Right? He going to open coal mines. Right? This motherfucker going to let them drill away in, in the natural preserves and shit. And frack all the oil and poison all the water. This motherfucker is bad. As he say, he's going to make America great again. Throwing up the signal like, I'm going to make America great again. I can't wait. I can't. He's going to raise, like, and, and not only is he going to get your manufacturing jobs, he's going to get well-paying manufacturing jobs, which means that all the products that we buy is going to go up by at least 50%. Incredible. And everybody going to get health care for free. This motherfucker is bad. I'm just waiting for him to do this shit. I'm just waiting. I just, you know what I'm saying? I just can't wait. It's a great time, sister. Hey, you know what I'm saying? If he do it, good. If he don't, we got something to talk about every week. I'm building a media empire off of this motherfucker. I don't care. Thank you, Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? Y'all on some, I mean, some, some, some of you scared niggas, y'all on some bullshit. Stop it. Stop it. You know what I'm saying? We done been through worse. This ain't shit. Nigga, I survived Reagan. I survived two Bushes. You know what I'm saying? Shit. I was born. I, I survived Nixon. My mama survived Nixon. This ain't shit. Donald Trump? A motherfucker that'll tweet out his strategy? Oh, give me a fucking break. Listen. I'm trying to build on my YouTube channel so that I can have... Lump sums of cash because when Donald Trump che- um, um, tweet against the company, you know what happens? Stock prices fall. I'm going to buy that shit up. Soon as I get enough YouTube viewers and shit like that, get a little bit of extra money flowing in. And soon as Donald Trump tweet the company, I'm buying the stock. Unless I figure out it's a trick. I'm buying the stock, letting that shit drop. And soon as his the buzz ends... I'm just going to ride it back up to the regular price or maybe beyond and sell that shit. Y'all ain't even thinking about it, right? Dude, you you planning to harm me and do harm to me gives me nothing but ammunition to destroy you. I'm loving it. I love, the, I love when my enemy tells me, I don't like you, I'm going to fuck you up. Now, I can focus all my efforts and all my energies on fucking you up first. I learned that during the Bush era. It's called uh, what? It, uh, I can't remember what what the term Bush used. A preemptive strike. I thought the motherfucker was gonna do something. Hey, it's time to organize. It's time to build. And and let me be clear. When I say organize, it don't mean all of us gotta think alike. All of us don't have to dress alike. All of us don't have to act alike. It just means we got to operate with some form of unity. We have to have some type of collective purpose. And we don't even have to agree on how to get there. I don't give a fuck if you're a Christian, Muslim, whatever. Just leave that shit at home. Let's start building. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop arguing over fairy tales and shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop Let's stop that shit. And let's start building. You know, I, I, I saw, um, I just did a video. And I was looking for examples on Ujima which is um, cooperative economics, I was looking for an example of cooperative economics, right, during that day, because that's where my mind was. My mind was on Ujima all day. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it with my kids. I'm looking for it. And so my mouth is hurting, so I, I went to an African store to buy some coconut oil. I walked into the African store, and I thought about it. I said, I, I done walked into about... Four African stores all over the city, and I never walked in and seen white people in any one of these stores. I never seen anybody but really Africans in there. Every now and then I might see uh, one of me, somebody African-American like myself, where I can understand, you know what I'm saying? The point I'm trying to make is cooperative economics is in effect around us all the time. If people could come over here from a whole other country and open up a store for specifically their culture, we could do the same shit. 
We do the same shit. We just think we just think that we got to have other people support all the time. And that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Let's stop being scared and let's start building. Nation building and fear cannot operate in the same place at the same time. It can't. You know what I'm saying? Fear, I'm not saying get rid of all fear. What I'm saying is fear is just a signal, but when fear is dominating, nation building can't happen. Love can't happen. Trust can't happen. Put your fear where the fuck it's supposed to be. Y'all letting y'all fear run y'all. We need You need to run the fear. Right? Feel it. It's a signal. It's telling you something. Learn to listen to your body. Right? But, you know, like I said, if you stuck on Moon Day and and, and Doo Day and, and Wooten's Day and Thor's Day and Freya's Day and Saturn's Day and Sun's Day, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Get off of that. Get on Umoja, Kuji Chagalia, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Kuumba, the money. Get your mind focused looking for your principles. It's a mechanism in your mind that when you set your mind on looking for something, it will automatically start finding that shit. What are you looking for on Monday? I'm saying set your mind. Set your GPS. Set that natural hunter up in you to find examples of unity around you. Find examples of a mojo around you and let's start building. This is our time. And the only ones that's going to stop us is us. That's it. That's it. We could build with some of our allies, but we got to first take care of home. We got to build home first. We got to build home first. We got to be bold enough to say when people bring our stuff that they say they bring out for us, we need to be bold enough to say, is this shit just for us? Because if it's not just for us, you're not going to use us for this shit. We need some shit just for us. Just like just like slavery, they define that shit just for us. Motherfuckers define some um define some policies just for us. Everybody getting health care is not just for us. Everybody getting access to the affirmative action is not just for us. We need some just for us shit to fix the shit that we are in. I'm sorry. You still there? Yeah. You can't let me go off like that, man. I'm just like, yo, man. Because, I mean, it's, 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 it's real out here. It's real out here. I'm seeing it. And I'm seeing our children, man. Our children are fucked up. She laughed when I said it because she couldn't believe it either. But, you know, she stopped laughing because she probably recognized that it was the truth. I got kids in my school talking about Donald Trump killed Malcolm X. I mean, killed Martin Luther King. Donald Trump is the real... No concept of time, no concept of history. They're in school. And check this out. Now, I just saw this I just saw this video. Most of y'all probably won't see it because I got YouTube red. This dude named Michael, he does this show called Vsauce. I can't remember the name of the show that he's producing on YouTube, but I suggest the show. The first episode this season was about isolation. So he started show off talking about boredom. Now listen, he started show talking off talking about boredom right and why humans avoid boredom so he did an experiment where he took a subject tricked the dude made the dude think that he was doing a survey and stuff like that and demonstrated this device that when you touch it it would send a painful shock through your hand listen check this out homeboy did it and he said man the actor said would you like to do that again he said no way I won't do it again. So they took this dude and put him in a room by himself and put the device in the room with him and said, listen, we're going to come back and we're going to fill out the survey, but you have to sit in this room for 30 minutes. This is part of the the test. You can feel free to mess with the uh, device if you want to. He said, no, I don't want to mess with the device. He sat in the room for one minute with boredom. And the key from getting bored, he shocked his motherfucking self. 
twice before they came back. Now, what does this have to do with anything, Brother Hatim? Our kids are sitting in schools where they are facing boredom. And rather than face boredom, human beings will do anything, even cause themselves pain. And when you look at the emotion of boredom, where it fits on the emotional spectrum, boredom is equal with despisement. When you despise something, you don't want to have nothing to do with it. Boredom evokes those same types of feelings. Our kids are sitting in school bored. You know why? Yeah, I know why. Well, I got a good idea. At least part of the puzzle. Right? But the point I'm trying to make well, is... The, the, I don't wait 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 I'm not wait hold on hold on before we get to the why what I want to do is make sure everybody get the point sinking in our children are doing shit to stimulate themselves because human beings are naturally programmed to avoid boredom human beings abhor boredom so if we have an education system that is gearing people towards taking a fucking test, I already don't like tests. Tests are already boring. They're challenging. And that's the only thing we're training our kids for. Then you got a problem. Kids are going to do shit to cause themselves pain. They're going to do shit to entertain themselves. Come on now. It ain't hard to tell. But go ahead, sis. You just rock. Give us an a, a, a answer. They're just preoccupied with all things that don't matter. You said who? Our children are preoccupied with all things that don't matter. So are so are their parents, and so are us. So are we. I, I say, I say. They only following the models they have, and the point that I'm trying to raise is that it's human nature to avoid boredom. So if the shit that you're constantly talking to me and saying that I need is boring. Even if I need this shit, I'm going to avoid it because it's a natural instinct. How do you be? One thing you told me, one thing you told me about boredom is that boredom is one of the better lessons that I learned. One of the first lessons I learned, I should say, that was um, that has always stuck with me is that there's nothing wrong with being bored, and that it is out of that boredom that. Now, but that's the point. When do the kids have an opportunity to create? See, because you, even with boredom, when you're creating, you're no longer bored. You find something else to do. Creation or kuumba is a stimulation. But in school. Listen what this African girl told me today. Go ahead. Yes, it does. Today. I can't remember which country she's from. Maybe Congo, or I don't remember where she was before she went to the Congo. But she tells me she's going to tell me why they're different, why they behave different at school, right? Mm -hmm. She tells me she said because we know where we come from, we know our parents struggle. We we had to get up at six o'clock in the morning. Walk miles to school. Yes, it does. Six o'clock at night. Do seven different subjects. She said they would kill our teachers. If the students, she said they killed my favorite English teacher. So when they come to the United States, they recognize that their family is still in this predicament, and they say she recognizes that it is us. She said I, we understand that it's us that will make the change. Right, a cultural. See, because she said it better, she said it better than I can say. 
Our culture provides us with our guidance system through life. If our culture is full of uh, strings of fuckery, right? If, if the fabric of our culture is based on fuckery, right? Then that's the type of stuff we're constantly going to pursue. We, the culture that we are allowing to be force fed into our children, allowing our children to explore, allowing our children to participate in is not future oriented. It has no responsibility. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's, it's, it's I can't say principleless because it's not principle. It, it has principles, but the principles are so, it, it are, are against our survival as a group which is a which is a powerful strategy those children come from a culture where the education is appreciated and you show the appreciation for that education through and and and, 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 and check me out you you show the respect for that education through respect for the teachers because not only do the child respect the teacher the parents respect the teacher because the teacher is an honored position in their community or in their culture even if the no. teacher oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead no, the here it is once they get to america it is right but in mm -mm. their country the parents if the kids say they don't okay she said in their country you could pay the teacher to give you back and grace you could pay the teacher i said well Mm -hmm. from Africa. They know each other since they've come here. They're all saying the same thing. And that's when we get into here, Ms. Ross, you talking about it'd be nice for families to pay you to get their good, their kids good grades, good, good marks. But what about when the kid complains about you and the kids or their parents murder you? Now, once so, again, that's... You need to find out. You need to. You need. I want to. I want to know what country it is. Because when I went to Ghana, it was a whole different experience as far as education. No, no, no. It's not. It's definitely not Ghana. I know it's not Ghana. Definitely not Ghana because these are these kids are coming from war-stricken countries. Now, hold on. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So now you're saying war-stricken countries. That's a whole different beast because during during war. Cultures, especially nowadays, cultures start falling apart, right? And usually what individuals are worrying about is resources and money. So now they're learning the same lessons our kids, they're learning the same lessons our kids. Right. Right. But hold on. Hold on. Why? Why? All right, those people on Facebook, if you want to call in, call me at 614-556-4535. My phone is about to cut off, so that means I won't be on Facebook Live. And my girls have probably drained down my battery. I'm going to try to get back up on something else if it, if it drops off. But to join the conversation, hit me up at 614-556. Because I ain't even four five three five because I didn't even get to get into the inauguration address because I got a Trump or two. And I we need to talk about this Trump or two. Right? And please don't just like the show. I want you to like, I want you to subscribe, and I want you to share. We are on Facebook, we on Twitter, we on YouTube. Make sure you share and like that, right? For those that like my little knot today, I call it my chaos knot. Right now, when you learn how to tie a knot for me, I can't reproduce this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember how to do this. I'm doing an original knot every day, and sometime I'm making it up while your ass is sitting there going through the video with me. This video for how to tie this knot will be available on my YouTube channel. So let people know. Sign up. Let's go. Let's build. It's time to build.
All right. Um, but let's just go in the show because my, my, my shit about to die. Right? I, I Thank you, everybody that tuned in. Brother Issa, if you in Columbus, I owe you a free bottle of Ambrosia. Miss Ross, I owe you a free bottle of that Ambrosia. You're going to have to come get it because I know you're going to piss me off long before that. And I'm going to pull my offer away. Um, so you need to get it tomorrow. Brother Issa, if you're in Columbus, um, inbox me so I can let you know where you can pick up a bottle uh, and try this Ambrosia tomorrow, you know what I'm saying, or Sunday, you know what I'm saying, get you some Ambrosia, right? Thank you very much to everybody, and especially you, Lady J, because it is an engaging conversation, and that is what we need. We need get. We don't need... I'm not on that shit. You who I say you are. How about that? Wait, wait. Lady Liberty. Okay, Lady Lady Liberty. First rule of 48 Laws of Power is what? What? First rule, first rule of 48 Hours never outsmart your master. No, it's never outshine your master. Right. right, okay. Now, I tried to I tried to put that on you. That's gonna be a hard one for you. But you wouldn't listen to me. You wouldn't listen to me. Alright, this is brother Hot Tim getting the last word in on Lady J before I hang up on her before she got something to say back. Um uh, I did tell you about that law, Lady J. I did tell you about that law. Now I ain't talking about me. You know who I'm talking about. I was trying to help you. All right. This is Brother Hot Tim. I toast each and every last one of you. First, I toast the ancestors. No, my fault. I, t- I toast the creator by whatever name you choose to call that creator. I toast our ancestors. All of them. Right? I toast the present moment. Right now, it's Kaumba. We are in Kaumba right now. Creativity. I toast our creativity. May you be able to creatively come up with ways to change your life. May you be able to come up with creative ways to earn your way towards prosperity. May you earn, uh, learn, may you be able to use your kuumba to come up with creative ways to move towards happiness and even deeper move towards joy. May you be able to create new opportunities for yourself and your family. I toast you, right? We also toast the future generation, our children, our children, and our children's children on to infinity. And with that, I say I shay. And as we say on the journey, I toast you one and, and say 100 years. Toast, I'm going to drink, and I'm up, and I'm out. Peace, Facebook. All right, Spreaker, it's just you and I right now. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Know that I appreciate you, and I'm out. Peace, this is Brother Hatim, and you have joined us on Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to check out our site and subscribe at tribe.giamijourney.com. All my brothers and sisters hold hands and bow your heads. Let us pray. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth amongst the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the Father, the judgment should have flipped it in the meeting, delivered the court.